Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And welcome to First Yahudim Messianic Temple here in Lake Placid, Florida. I am his servant, Maria Elena Simpson. <laughs> it is so awesome to be with all of you again with another word, with another message on this gorgeous, beautiful day in Lake Placid, Florida, that we are having a sunny, bright, gorgeous day. And we have to be very grateful that he is giving in this beautiful day. We're alive, we're kicking, and honestly and truly, we're heading for something big. Amen. Do you all agree with me? Yes. Yes. I'm going to go right into the message today. Amen. And it's a message that I believe that is going to touch everybody that hears it, that sees it, that understands it, and receives it. Okay? And really, the message today is titled, It is Possible. What do you mean, Maria? What, 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 what am I talking about that is going to be possible? See, as human beings, we have limits. But He doesn't. Amen. Elohim, God doesn't have limits. Amen to that. And He has placed the unlimited inside of us. He has placed the unstoppable inside of us. So today, you are going to, I am going to help you so you... So that uh, unlimited power you can reach and understand that there's nothing impossible for you to reach your, your dreams, your goals, a good relationship. Maybe you want to make more money. Maybe you want a career. Maybe you want to be a better mom, a better pop, a better dad. You know, maybe you want to buy a house, a car, brand spanking new car. Who can raise, who can raise that? Who can raise it? Before I begin talking about the message, I want to talk to all you out there that are believers in Elohim. I want to let I'm going to let you a little secret. You want to hear it? Yes. And if you don't want to hear it, that's okay, because I'm going to tell you no, no matter what. <laughs> There's a difference between. Having faith in him, look at this, you have faith in him and the abilities he has placed in you and the purpose he has for you that he placed you on this earth. And what's happening, happening to a lot of believers, they really cannot distinguish one from the other. So today I'm going to help you with that. Do you all, do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, you believe God exists. You have faith in Him. You know that He, you know that He is the He is the Olive and He is the Tav. He's in Genesis. He's in Revelation. He is Father Yahweh Shabbat and His Son Yeshua Hamashiach is the Son, the Savior. He was here. He's coming back. Am I right? Yes. Okay. See, that's one area which is called your spiritual life. But there's another area of you. That he has placed in you, your purpose here, number one, is to put him number one. But number two, he has placed in you greatness. He has placed in you dreams. He has placed in you desires. He has placed in you potential. See, we all were made and created in his image and likeness. But he has given us a piece of him. So we can do his purpose in this, in this world, but also so he, we, he has given us so we can also do our purpose that he has given us. This is why we have chefs and we have doctors and we have, we have engineers, we have mothers, we have fathers. In other words, not everybody is seeking the same thing. That's why everything is possible for you if you believe, because if nothing is impossible for Elohim, why should it be for you? 
Doesn't he live with you? In you? And he, if he is with you, who can be against you? Now, now comes my message. Who are you? Where are you headed for? And where are you right now? Do you feel right now that you're stuck and don't know how to get out of wherever it is that you are? Maybe you want more money. Maybe you want wisdom of the Torah. Maybe you want a better relationship. Maybe whatever it is, maybe you want healing in your body. Maybe you want children that are more, that, you know, that... experience is not necessarily a sign that a person is not doing it's not that is a person is doing something wrong no because Yeshua too had to go to the wilderness experience for 40 days and 40 nights the number 40 in the Bible it represents it's a time of trials it's a time of learning your experiences right now, what you have gone through that have made you cry, that you didn't understand certain things, is a time for you to learn something to better yourself. It's not a time in your wilderness experience that you're doing something wrong, but really that you're doing something right. It is a time that Elohim, God, ordained your testing. that you never experienced but you need to go to the wilderness experiences because that wilderness experience means that you're doing something right it is a time of Elohim God ordained testing he is testing you in your wilderness experience there is fear and hopelessness and because there's not there's something that is unknown you don't know what's happening what's happening I cry I don't feel why nobody pays attention to me what's happening in my life but that means that it's the right thing because you are about to learn something in that experience that you never had before. A wilderness experience is a period of trials that comes on the heels of a period of accomplishments and achievements. Your soul will get transformed. And this wilderness experience means that your soul is about to get transformed. Our soul? Your soul. It's about to get transformed. Please go with me to Exodus chapter 12, verse 31. Now, remember when, when Israel was 400 years in Egypt? Yeah. Yeah. Egypt is a representation of slavery. 400. It's also 4. 4. 40. Exodus 12, 40. Okay? No. Exodus wow. chapter number 12, verse 31. Now, they're about, they were in Egypt, and they were enslaved. Yeah, they were slaves. But see, this time in slavery is also an ordained time that Elohim, that God had to have them there. Mm -hmm. 
Because there is where you grow. You multiply. You begin to multiply. But the problem there is you begin to be in slavery. Because people will begin to take control of your life and you give it to them. Just like driving a car. When you drive a car, do you are you the one behind the, dri the wheel or do you let the passenger drive for you and take it away from you? You are the one in control of that car. You are the one that turn. You are the one that stop. You are the one that go back. It, it, so you have to be in control. What happens when you are a slave to something means you're not in control of your life. And look at what it says. Now, this is Egypt. Egyptians, they wanted them to leave because of all the, the ten plagues that came. And he says, no, no, get, get these people out of here because they're crazy. Their God is bigger than, I, than we are. And he sure is. He sure is. And look at what it says on verse number uh, 31. Now, this is when Moses comes in front of uh, Pharaoh at the end. And he goes, and he called for Moses, Pharaoh. And Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from amongst my people, both ye and your children of Israel, and go serve Yahweh as you have said. Also take your flocks, your herds, <laughs> and you said, as you have said, and be gone. But he said, But you bless me too. <laughs> <laughs> he was on a fool. Why did he want it to be blessed? Wow. Because his son died. From his own mouth. Bless Death God. and life are in the power of the tongue. He says, all Israel, all the, all they all going to die. <laughs> and guess what? Wow. But of his own mouth, the firstborn in all Egypt. They were born on, in each house. They were all dead. So he says, you bless me too. What he meant is, make my son to be resurrected. And look at what it says in verse 33. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. And they said, we be all dead men if these people keep come staying here. So now Israel is coming out with gold, with silver, with everything that actually Egyptians had. But now they're going into a wilderness experience. And in this wilderness experience, Yahweh, Elohim, God, was testing them. And they flunk. See, when you go to school and you flunk your test, you're going to repeat that class again. They flunk. <laughs> they flunk. Yeah. Because instead of them going to the to experiences, their mountaintop experience, they were, Yahweh says, now you're going to be in this desert for 40 years. It's a time of testing. It's a wilderness experience. They had jackals and they had snakes and they had animals and they had this and they had that. But see, they, they it didn't see they were protected. When you are going through what you're going, you're being protected. Because he has placed a purpose on you. And he is not done with you yet. Open your mind. Open your heart. Open your spirit to his truth. Mm -hmm. Don't get stuck in religion. Don't get stuck in legalism. Don't get stuck in poverty. Don't get stuck in sickness and diseases. Don't get stuck there because you have the power to get out. Do you believe this? Yes. Because I know I do. And I am teaching you what I believe because what I am saying, I live it. I just don't speak it. I live what I'm saying. Hmm. You are about to get or to go to your mountaintop experience. And what is that mountaintop experience? It's called freedom. Amen. Freedom. Amen. How many of you right now would like freedom? Amen. How many of you are lacking and would like freedom? Freedom. Amen. What is freedom? Freedom is leaving ignorance, slavery, to the pursuit of happiness, wow. to the pursuit of blessings. 
ignorance is lack of knowledge and information and when you do that that means that your mind is closed poverty is a curse Ignorance is <laughs> slavery. Freedom is the power or the right to act, speak, or think in what, in what you want without hindrances and restraint. What are you? Who are you? Well, I'm going to tell you who you are. You are blessed and highly favored. Amen to that. Amen. You are, listen to the word, you are blessed and highly favored. The word blessed means you, means happiness. And the only one that can bring the happiness in your life is yourself. You are responsible for that happiness. I see a sister that she's kind of like, what do you mean? Yes. Because he, Elohim, has given us all the happiness and all the blessing. It's up to us to take it from the, from the tree of life. <laughs> you are where you are right now because you have chosen it. <laughs> you are blessed and highly favored. And this is not just say you need to believe. You need to believe this in your spirit. You need to believe this in your mind. You need to believe this in your soul. You need to believe this in your heart. Because what you feel is what you are going to receive. What you feel is what you get. <laughs> it's not what you see that you get. It's what you feel. How you feel in your heart is what you are going to get in your in life. What your mind can conceive, it will achieve. What your heart feels, it will receive. You are not what you eat. <laughs> You're not. You are what you think and you are what you feel. Thoughts are the language of the mind. Feelings are the language of the heart. As a man thinks in his mind, so is he. Or as a man thinks in his mind that he can, so is he. One of the things that Israel did in the wilderness is constantly did what? They complain and complain and complain and complain. How do you like to be around complainers? If you don't come in agreement with me, I'm going to come in agreement with you. If you don't come in agreement with me, I'm going to come in agreement with you. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. What is your tongue speaking? Wow. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. It's in the power of your mind. It's in the power of your heart. And they that love it will eat its fruits. Mm. Let me say that again. Death and life are in the power of your tongue, are in the power of your mind, are in the power of your heart. And they that love it, whatever it is that you love, that you think about, that you feel, that you talk about, whatever it is, you will eat its fruits. Symbolically speaking, death means that it is impossible. I can't. It's negative talk. See, Yeshua came here to give us an example. Really, what would Yeshua do? All the prophets, all the prophets gave us to give us an example. The kings of what to do and what not to do. What is it that you're fearing? Get rid of fear. Fear, literally, and sometimes there's good fear, and I'm not going to go into that, but fear is, a, is something that we put in our minds. We see monsters where there's no monsters. 
well, I'm not good enough. I don't speak good enough. I don't do this good enough. I, you know what? I want to go to school. I'm, I'm, I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. I cannot do this. I cannot do this. And I cannot do this because of fear. And what happens is instead of, instead of you taking one step of faith, what happens is you get stuck. And when you come from fear, you're going to see that fear is not as big as you think it is. You are. You are. You are. Symbolically speaking, life, when we say death and life, when we say life, symbolically speaking, it means it is possible. I can make it. I can create it. I know I can. I know I can. Ask any woman or any mother that she's going through labor pain, if she's going to say, I can't, she's going to say, no, I know I can't. I, it's, I know I can't. Mm -hmm. It's an intense pain that is unbearable when you're having natural birth pains. I had two. I thought my teeth even, they were going to get loose. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm not kidding. If it's po Listen very carefully. If it's possible for the day... And for the night, for light and darkness to appear, then what is impossible for you? What shall be impossible for you? Because it is written for Elohim with God, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So it should be for you. Because if he lives in you, who can be against you? No one. Repeat after me. And I want you to repeat after me with all your heart and use your tongue the right way. It's not over. It's not, not over. over. Until I win. Until I win. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. I can live my dream. I can I live my dream. I am a cre I, I am I am creative. I am creative. I got to make it happen. I'm about to make it happen. It's not over. It's, it's not, not over. Until I win. Until, Until I, I win. win. Winning is not about that you're in some kind of competition with anybody. Winning is the purpose that he has given you in this life. Because you did not come to this, this world by yourself. He sent you here. Yeah. He sent you here. What are you waiting to make what you want to make happen real? What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for somebody to come along and help you? Are you waiting for a miracle to happen while you're sitting down watching soap operas? <laughs> are you waiting? You're just waiting for a change to take place? Stop making excuses and start doing. Faith without works is dead. A body without a spirit <laughs> is dead. Goals and dreams without actions don't become reality. How many am I talking to? There's pos listen very carefully. There is possibilities everywhere. You are loaded with possibilities. You're smart. You're handsome. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. You have been made in his image. Always put him first. No matter what you do in life, possible you are drenched in possibilities. Yeah. Stop complaining and stop making excuses. And start doing. Put one foot in front of the other, and I can guarantee you, you will get to the other side. You will get be you will get behind that door. You will get across that door. And who's gonna stop you? It's time for you to get up. Get up from the floor. If you have fallen, if you didn't make it, if you feel. Let me tell you. Listen very carefully. You are not going from the floor or the ground under. And when you fall down, I'm going to tell you there's only one way. Get up. Uh -huh. Get up. Get up. 
Be different. Go after your dreams. Go after your goal. Do what you have to do. And why am I talking this way? Because this is my dream. This is my dream. This is my goal. It's to speak to you and others worldwide to help them. Well, Maria, you know, we have a lot of, you know, uh, inspirational speakers and motivationals and we got coaches. I am not competition with nobody. But I know what he has given me. And what I have, you need. And what you have, I need. Because he has given you a gift that he hasn't given me. And he has given me a gift to help you. To help you. I cannot do what you need to do. I can, I can just lead you. I can coach you. I can say, hey, this. But it takes determination. You have to be determined to do what you need to do. Amen. You're full of possibility. There's tremendous, tremendous power in you. Why do I say this? Let's take the word potential. You know where the word, word potential comes from? Potent. Potent. Yahweh, Elohim, God is called omnipotent. He's all powerful. The word potent, this is why when a man cannot function like a man, he's called, he's in impotent, impotency. Go ahead, you can say it. Impotent. Impotent. When, when you understand the word potential that is inside of you, it is a power, it is a fire that you cannot stop. You need, let me tell you, you believe in the Most High. You believe, I don't know what is it that you believe in, but let me tell you, there is something. Some of you believe there is something power, more powerful than us, but I'm going to tell you that God has put in you His potential, His intelligence. It is for you to accomplish that desire that is inside of you. You want to open a business. What's stopping you? Fear? Get rid of fear. Mm -hmm. Get rid of fear. Well, I, I'm making right now, I'm making uh, $32,000 a year. You really think that's a lot of money? As a matter of fact, in today's time, $100,000 is not a lot of money. Uh -huh. It really isn't. The way economy is, it's not a lot of money. What is it that you want? Why don't you write it down? Look at what he's given you. And you know what? You're always going to get people that are going to come against you because they don't want you to achieve. Because you know what? All our lives, even from little, we have been programmed from our parents. We have been crying from teachers, from, from churches. What to believe, what not to believe, how to behave. How to do. Let me tell you this. You know when you're doing something right or wrong. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. And how can I say this? Because when you when we do something wrong, we love to hide. Mm -hmm. So nobody can see us. <laughs> how determined are you to make your dreams a reality? How far do you want to go? Possibilities are everywhere. You have the necessities, abilities, and qualities to become successful, successful in anything you want. Get rid of the impossibles in your life and focus on your possibilities. Focus on the changes. Focus on the expectations because they're everywhere. Determine. Determination is the key of getting to the other side of your mountain top. Go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 19. Now, Matthew, do you know why I get excited? Matthew. See, I get excited because I know where I have been. You have not been where I have been. You have not worn my shoes. 
And in a little bit, I'm going to tell you where I have been. And see, in my life, the one person I have made number one is always been Elohim, God. And to this day, he has never failed me. And you know how good that feels? When every time a person got in my way because I was going through something that he has placed in me, I had people laughing at me because I was too young. I wasn't going to make it. I have people that really turn their back from me. But see, I'm glad they did this because that gave me strength. Because I always said, if he's with, this is what I, if he's with me, who can be against me? Yeah. I got two legs, I got two arms, I got a brain, I got a heart, I am healthy, and he's with me. Amen. Nothing is impossible for me. And wait until I tell you how far I went, and I'm still going. Because I haven't reached the potential that he has placed inside of me. Look at what it says here in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Nineteen twenty-six. This is when the rich man says, you know, oh, good master, when, you know, who can go into heaven? You know, um, uh, you know, how can two go to eternal life and so on and so on? And Yeshua said, uh, well, you know, have you done these commandments? And he said, yes. And he goes, so you're lacking something. Give everything you have and give it to the poor. But he was very wealthy. And he walked away. Uh -huh. And then the disciples goes, well, master, uh, I believe it must have been Peter. Peter always had the, the big mouth. Um, and then who should have, who is going to have the, the eternal life? We gave everything we had to, to follow you. Because they also had money. They were rich, believe it or not. Yeah. And look what Yeshua said. But Yeshua beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible. But with Elohim, all things. Look what it says. But with Elohim, or with God, all things are what? Possible. possible. Amen. Hallelujah. All, it doesn't say some things. All, all. all things. Everything. All. The, the name all means everything. Amen. All things are possible with Elohim. Yahweh Sabaot. Because he is the source of everything. He is the omni, omnipresent, omnipotent. He is El Shaddai. He is the wonderful God. He is the king of glory. And that king of glory is inside of you. That fire is inside of you. Amen. And what was the first thing that he did? Let there be lights. Learn how to say in your life, let there be money, let there be finances, let there be healing, let there be wisdom. <laughs> you just don't speak this, you need to believe this. He's the possible of the impossible. He is, he is the possible of the impossible. Hallelujah. Turn around your impossible and let the possibility and let the positive of the creator begin to work in your life. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Yeshua HaMashiach who strengthens you. Everybody, listen to me. Everybody is not heading to the same place. They're not heading. We are all not heading for the same dream. Yahweh, Elohim, God placed you on this earth. You did not place yourself here. He did. To make him number one. To know that he exists. And there's nothing more powerful than he is. But he also placed you here with dreams. So you can open your, so you can open your business. So you can so you can go and have a better relationship with your spouse, with your with your with your mother, with your brother, with your sister. So you can be a better mother and, fa and father. So you can be a writer. So you can be a a, a, a professional, um, I don't know, doctor, lawyer, engineer. Maybe you want to be an astronaut. Please 
I want you, because this is, um, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to answer me, especially the ones that are here. Look around you right now, and I really want you to look around. Look around. I don't want you to tell me, but look around, and what do you see? Including you, you too. What do you see? If you really look, I mean, if you... <laughs> If you're really going to answer me, you probably say, well, I see trees and here. I see trees and I, I see, see the possible. I see the possible, my husband says. What else do you see? What else do you see? Maybe you see, we see each other, yeah. right? You see me probably, you know, talking to you. I see change. Amen. One of the sisters says, I see change. Amen. What else do you see? <laughs> wow. Wow, you're seeing too much. Well, get ready for this. Woo! Get ready, get ready, get ready for this. Look around you, and what do you see? I'm going to tell you exactly what you... I'm, I personally will tell you what you see. You are looking, and you are sitting in my reality. Virtual reality. You, no, 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 no. You are seeing and you are sitting and seeing my reality. You're, where you are right now that you're hearing me and you're seeing me is a dream I had 20 years ago. And you're sitting and you are sitting because you're making my dream come true because that was a desire that I had to speak public speaking to men, women all over the world to help them where they're at. See, when I ask you, look around you, you were thinking around. No, no, you are sitting in my reality. This is not to really make, no, no. It's because what I desire, it was so penetrated into me. I was determined because he gave me this to make it happen. Now get ready for this. Get ready for this. How did I do it? And I'm not finished yet. Because this is going, this is bigger. How did I do it? One word. One word. I was, one word, hungry. I was hungry. I was determined. I had passion, and I still have passion. <laughs> I was hungry to make my dream a reality. And maybe some of you are saying, why? And why not? You're sitting, you're listening to something you need. And that desire and that hunger was so big inside of me that today I'm living and I am not completely 100% there. Hunger is the epitome and the model of success. If you are not hungry enough, you will not be successful. Listen very carefully because at the age of 22, I got married at 18, had two children. At the age of 22, I already with two children. One was three years old and the other one was 18 months old. I opened my first salon and let me tell you how I did it. I don't have a college background. I did not have any money when I began my business. My father-in-law and my father both had to give half. And my business at that time was $5,000 or $6,000. They both gave half. I had no one to support me except the belief that I have in God, in Elohim, and the support I have for my husband. One thing I did have was determination. Yeah. I had determination. I had a hunger inside of me for success, not for me, for others. I was laughed at in the salon I was working before I started the salon because I was only 22 years old. 
They were all making fun of me in this salon. And they were shouting and they really were ridiculing me. And as they were really killing me, I'm 22 years old. I look at my legs. I said, I got two legs. I got two arms. I got, I got a brain. I know he's done this for me. And you know what? I didn't, I didn't cry. I said, now for sure I'm going to open my business. Mm -hmm. I did. Not only did I have one, I had three. <laughs> three businesses. Listen very carefully. What is success? Most people, when they think of success, they are constantly, they're thinking of money. That's part of it. But success for many people is different things. Mm -hmm. Success is the accomplishment of an aim and a purpose. It means that you are aiming for a purpose. Your purpose, your dream cannot, nobody can make them real except for yourself. Now watch this. Let me tell you about myself. I was hungry at the age of 22 for a business. Because I come, my father had a business. And it became a reality and I got fed. At the age of 37, I was hungry for the Bible. Because I, I wasn't, I was hungry for the Bible. And my dream became a reality. I got fed. Mm -hmm. At the age of 37, same age, I was hungry for being the best hair colorist. Not hair, not hairstylist, hair colorist. And my dream became a reality. And let me tell you, being a colorist, the way I became a colorist, is not that I did color, is I began to be a chemist and I began to do color chemistry and I began to do formulas. Each of our clients had a formula, a color formula that only I could do. But do you know how hard and, and how hard I had to work and how many seminars I went? Because I wanted to be the best. Not because I was in competition, but it's because I was determined to make it happen. My clients that sat on my chair were not paying $20 an hour, $20 to me. They were paying $300 and up. But see, what they were paying was my experience. Do you know how much I had to study to do this? None, none, nobody in my salon. They said, how do you do this? And the most, like, the most fascinating thing about this is that I never, ever wrote the formulas down. They were all in my head. That's true. You can, you can, Claro, Reckon, uh, Shiseido, I mean, not Shiseido, um, Goldwell, any, any company, any company. And the only thing I, because I started doing formulas, chemistry. I took a number and I took a letter and that's all I needed. I will look at a person and says, that's what they need. Now that takes a lot of dedication and determination to make it. And let me tell you, I had companies calling me because they wanted to me to be certified under them as a hair colorist. I will do hair shows. And how do you do this? I said, I don't know. I just... I, I love what I do. You know why I love being a hair colorist? Because I used to do hair and I used to bring the character of that person and that hair. It's not about cutting hair. It's about having passion and looking and studying and, and the face and all this. And let me tell you this. There was people. I had a client that would come from another state three or four times a year just to get her hair done by me. But I didn't want that no more because he had something better for me. Listen very carefully. But I did it. Listen there. I used to do platform work. I used, to, I used to do hair coloring for hairdressers. Professional hairdressers. I was hungry and I got fed. <laughs> Nine years ago, I was hungry to learn Hebrew roots. And believe me when I tell you, I got fed. I got fed. 
We're living in prophetic times. This we're living in the times. We're living in the time of Elijah. We're living in the time of, of Noah's time. We're living. And you know what? But something I was lacking. Something. Not that I don't believe in him. Not that I don't study. But he has something better. He's got something greater for me. And you're, you're right now, this is what it is. Because I'm going to the country. I'm going to the world. I'm going. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen very carefully. At the age of 35, I was hungry to make my mar a great marriage, great children, great grandchildren, family, and I got fed because all these is called for me, my priority, and I left behind what I needed to, you know, my accomplishments. And I was doing them, but I had priorities. My children, my husband, my family, Elohim, it's always been number one. And let me tell you something. It took a lot of hard work. It took dedication. And I paid the price. Are you? I pay the price. You know how many times I was, I, I, I went in prayer crying? Because I had this desire of what I'm doing right now that I want to go to the nations. I wanted to speak. And right now I'm doing it, but I'm not done yet. That was called my wilderness experience. I love what I'm doing right now. It is a fire. Why is that? Because I've been where you are right now. And he has put this inside of me to help those, to speak to those. Not that I can make you, not that I can do for you what you cannot do for yourself. So it's to help you through my experience that nothing is impossible. Since the age of 27, I have been conducting public speakings in high schools, in small businesses, in women's group, in church, in kehilas. And many of you know what kehilas is. I have coached. Since, nine, since the age of 27, married couples, mm -hmm. women that have been abused, people in relationship. I didn't know why I was doing those things. It's a passion that he, he had placed inside of me. Today at the age of 59, I am still hungry. To speak to men, to women, to married couples, people in relationship, people who are hurting, people that that, that they feel that they cannot, that you know, that they're not enough. No, that's you are enough. Yes. And say to them, it is possible. If I did it and I am doing it, so can you. Someone's opinion of you does not make your reality. Let me say that again. Someone's opinion of you is not your reality. <laughs> Let me plant this seed in you. What you're feeling right now is the hunger that I have to help you, to speak to you. That there's nothing impossible for you. Let me plant this inside of you. I don't know what your dream is. But it's possible. Your dream is possible. Your desire to make a reality, whatever it is, is possible. Get the losers out of your life. If you want to make your goals and your dream real, get the losers out of your life. It's not over. Repeat after me. It's not over. It's not, not over. over. Until I win. Until I win. It's not over. Not over. Until I win. Until I win. It is possible. It is possible. I can live my dream. I can live my dream. I am creative. I am creative. I got to make it happen. I got to make it happen. It is not over. It is not over. Until I win. Until I win. Hallelujah. You have great potential. You have the power within you. Yes. You just need to persevere towards your mountain top experience. Yeah. 
Don't hold back. Don't quit. Don't allow anybody to take control of what it is that you want. Your life belongs to you. It does not belong to anybody else. Your life was given to you by Elohim, by God himself. Amen. He is the one that has placed those dreams, those goals. He is the one that created you in your mother's womb. He is the one that sent you to this earth. You did not send yourself, including your mama and your papa, did not send you here. He did. And it's time for you to arise. It is time for you, hallelujah, to go towards your dreams, towards your goal, what he has placed you here for. You have great potential. You have power. Yes. Persevere towards your mountaintop experience. If you are living in the basement of your mind, it's time for you to go to your penthouse. <laughs> if you've been flapping your wings like a chicken and a turkey, it's time for you to spread your wings as an eagle and soar like an eagle. If you've been a little, little, tiny, little cat, it's time for you to roar like a lion. Lion, when he wakes up in the morning, he is hungry. He is hungry. A lion does not wake up hungry and runs away from food. A lion wakes up and he is hungry and he goes towards his food. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? And if some of you are saying, well, if she's loud, yeah, you damn right I'm loud because I have good lungs. Because many times I had to say this to myself. Many times when many said to me, it is not possible. And I say, it is possible. At the age of 20 years old, when I had my first child, they left a piece of placenta inside of me. And let me tell you, all my family were around me. I was dying. A hundred and eight fever that would not leave me for a whole week. For that, I had like 15% um, death in my, in my ear because of that fever. Even the priest came and he came with that, with that, what do you call that? The, um, the ashes, because I was a Catholic then. Last rites. And he came putting ashes, he didn't even, and I said, what the hell is this man doing here? He doesn't even think, he doesn't care about, get it! And I said, get out of here! What do you mean you're putting ashes? Let me tell you, while they were all around me, I said, I'm coming out of this. I don't know how I'm going to, but I'm coming out of this. And I started crying. I said, because I, you are not done with me yet. Hallelujah. You did not place yourself in this world. But your creator did. You were formed in your mother's womb by the hands of the Almighty for a purpose. Hands create, hands build, hands fight, hands express, and hands do healing. Mm -hmm. Yeshua is at the right hand of the Father. Because he has been given, the Messiah has been given all the, all the power and authority. Hallelujah. And he sits down on the right hand, the right hand of the Father, the right hand of power. Fat hands have something. They have fingerprints. What does that mean? It means that your fingerprints make you different. They make you different. You are not like anybody else. You are unique. You are awesome. And I'm not saying this to motivate you or inspire you. This is because it's the truth. The only thing is that you need to believe it. Yeah. You need to believe it. Because you have been around people that have told you differently. Yeah. 
fingerprints makes you different than any other human being. Does Elohim have fingerprints? <laughs> no. Does he have fingerprints? No. He's a spirit. I believe that the fingerprints that he has is everybody's print in his hands. Mm. Let's go there. You want to see it? <laughs> Isaiah chapter 49, verse 16. Isaiah 49, look at what it says. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 16. Behold, the, the word behold means see. I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. The walls are continuously before me. Your fingerprints, all our fingerprints he has in his hands. <laughs> That's why he has made us different. Doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It's just different. So he has all our fingerprints. Israel was enslaved in Egypt, but slavery is through the mind, spirit, physical. And the soul. But they became free. Who doesn't like freedom? They became free. But the problem is when you're free, you want to go back to Egypt. You want to go back to Egypt. You want to go back to slavery. In Egypt. We were eating fish and, 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 and all these wonderful things. We were, we were drinking uh, milk and honey. What a, what a liar from the pit of hell. <laughs> you know why? Because when he frees you and you walk in towards your potential, what happens is you're coming out of the box on something that you're not used to. Either you continue towards your blessings or you go back to Egypt and you continue having a pity party and you become a victim all your life. Victim. Victims are not winners. And a victim can be a winner if they decide to get up and do what they have to do. Israel was like in a cocoon and could not become themselves. They were not released. This is what is happening maybe in your life that you have accomplished all this, but there's something inside of you that you don't know what it is, but you want to keep on going because you have a dream. Just like Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. Martin Luther King left a legacy. I have a dream. And when you have a dream, you're going to have many people that are going to come against you. It's time to make your dream a reality. And you need to put that, you need to put your foot in front of the other and start talking to yourself and start walking towards down the right side and the left side and the right side and the left side and do baby, 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 baby stuff until you begin to run. Baby, baby. <laughs> until you begin to run. Run. In the desert is when you are tried. In the desert, hallelujah, in the wilderness. This is either you pass the test or you stay there. You stay there. It's up to you. It is up to you. It is up to nobody. It is up to you. I'm going to share with you very quickly a, a testimony. My husband almost died six months ago. My husband was bitten in the leg. I don't know if it was a, 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 an ant or a spider or a, a, something or a fly. I don't know. But anyway, he had a fever of, of 108. I don't want to go into details, but my husband really had... Um, he went into... Um, what do you call that? He, we went into the emergency room. 
And then we went to, where was it that we went? Intensive care. They put him in intensive care because the fever would not go down. That was a turning point in my life. Of 40 years, now my husband, six months ago, almost died. And my daughter calls me and goes, Mom, did you know what, that, what dad has? Only 20% of people survive and the arrest die. Because what dad has is very serious. They were giving him like uh, antibiotics. Very powerful, very strong antibiotics. Back to back. Huh? Back to back. They were giving very strong back to back. But look at this. My daughter calls me up and says, Mom, Dad's fever went to 110 and cannot go down. So I'm going and I'm, I'm, I'm crying. And I'm, and now this, this happened within 10 days. And I'm, I'm praying. Everybody's praying. This is why I believe in, that's why I believe in Elohim. This is why I believe in God so much. Mm -hmm. As I'm going and as I'm praying, I don't even know how I got into the, I don't know how I got to the hospital. Because my tears could not even let me see outside. And I started speaking to him and I said, How? Oh, don't take my husband away from me. Not yet. And I know about death. But it's not his time. People were praying. But let me tell you, I was there by myself in that car. As I entered into the emergency room. And I'm crying. And then, you know, the, the, the people there, you know, the, the nurses, they come and they hug me. Because they saw me, my desperation. And, you know, they didn't know what's going on. I just said that my husband was dying. And then they, they hugged me. And as I walked through the emergency room, there is a hospital, there are seven day events, and there's these, these, these verses on the wall of the Bible. And as I'm crying, I mean, my, my, I, my, I cannot even see. And I'm desperate. I'm, all of a sudden, I look to my right and I see this huge verse on the Bible. And I look and it says, Do not fear. For I am with you. You have no idea. As I read that, it felt like rain was coming upon my soul. And I said, well, well he is with me. And as I kept on going, I, there were more verses. And when I got to my husband's uh, room, the intensive care, the way I entered the emergency, the way I got there is totally different. And then what I did was I put my hands upon him. I started praying. And let me tell you, today my husband lives if you don't believe that there is a God, if you don't believe that he is more powerful than anything, then please rethink again, because he is. He's real. Amen. That moment, there was a transformation in my life. Transformation. <laughs> I started thinking about what we were, the, the message that we were bringing. I said, something needs to change. I want freedom. I'm not, come, I'm not against anybody the way you believe. I'm not, please, I don't do that. But he said, it's time for you to take away your covering. What you need to cover is your heart. He says, now things have to change. Because my people, they're desperate. My people are crying out. And what happens? I told my husband, I'm free. I'm free. Because now, what I started in the age of 22, that I more or less did, but not completely, now I'm going to make it real. You know what that is? It's to finish, it's to complete that desire, that dream, that reality that he has placed in me. And this is what I'm doing is for you. Repeat after me. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Until I win. Until I win. It is possible. It is, it is possible. possible. I can live my dream. I can, I can live, live my dream. I got to make it happen. I got to make it happen. It's not over. It's not it's over. over. Until I make it win. Until I make it win. <laughs> Yeshua also had a wilderness experience. It is his will. It is Elohim's will that we go through these testing. Yeshua was full of the Holy Ghost, the Ruach HaKadosh, when he was in the wilderness. Did he pass the test? Yes. Yes. You know why? Because he knew his purpose. What was his purpose here on earth? Do you? Determined. 
He was determined. He didn't care what devil came to him. He didn't care. He didn't care the, the, the snake in the grass that was literally. He didn't care who says what. He knew his purpose. And he says, I am here because I am here. Hallelujah. Because my father says so. And he has sent me. And I, my purpose is to die for Israel. Israel. And destroy the devil's work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Understand this. <clears throat> we are never without Elohim's, without, without his grace. We're always with his grace. Yeshua may have been with the wild animals and also might have been with the wild devil himself, but Yeshua also was with angels and came and protected him. In a wilderness experience, you are going to come through struggles. And you need to learn how to survive from day to day because these struggles are your finances. Maybe it's material. Maybe it's physical. Maybe it's emotional. Maybe it's spiritual. These are burdens may press on you and you cry because you want relief. Does this sound like you? Yes. The wilderness experience is a place that is unpleasant. We naturally want prosperity. We want health. <laughs> we want good things, yes? Yes. yes. Well, remember this. The same God, the same Elohim who created the garden also created the wilderness. There will be times of trials and pressure. Our faith will be tested. But Elohim, His grace will meet us even in the wilderness. And make your impossible possible. Because He is the Elohim. He is the God of the possible. Hallelujah. And nothing is impossible for Him. Which means is all this possible that he has is possibilities that he has placed in you. Where are you running towards? You're running towards something. Or either you're running or you're staying and you're sitting down because you're waiting for something to happen. And that is not going to happen. You need to run the race. Because in the race, only one person wins the race. Hallelujah. And guess what? Let's go there. And Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. Verse number 24. Now this is Paul speaking. See, the race that you are running is not against anybody else. The race that you are running is yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to challenge yourself. Can I make it? Can I do it? Is this possible? What do I need? This and that. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run a race run all? In other words, everybody's running. Yeah. But only one receives the price. <laughs> so run that you may obtain. Amen. Wow. Run. Get up from your behind. Yeah. If you need to lose weight, get up from your behind and start doing what you're doing. Wow. <laughs> Let's go, please. And you need, you, we need to go here. Because I can read it for you. But see, you need to read it. Uh, Philippians. Philippians. Philippians chapter number. Uh, Philippians number three. And I'm almost done. 313. 313. Amen. One of the things that you need to let go of is your past. Stop looking in the mirror and see your imperfections. See, because you're looking at the wrong thing. You're looking at what's outside of you instead of looking what's inside of you. 
Stop looking at the material world and start looking at what you don't see because what you don't see is more powerful than what you do see. Look at what it says in, in Philippians chapter th uh, 3, verse 13. Brothers, I come not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Get rid of your past. Get rid of what anybody has done to you. And reaching forth for those things which are before you. In other words, what's ahead of you? Because you don't run backwards, you run forwards. 14. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of Elohim in Messiah Yeshua. Life is about taking risk. I am free. Say it. I am free. I can. I can. I will. I will. I must. I must. Let me say it again. I am free. I am free. I can. I can. I will. I will. I must. I must. I must. It's not over. Not over. Until I win. Until I Say win. it that you mean it. It's not over. It's, it's not, not over. over. Until I win. Until, Until I, I win. win. It is possible. It, it is, is possible. possible. I can live my dream. I can live my dream. I am creative. I am creative. I got to make it happen. I got to make it happen. It's not over. It's not over. Until I win. Until I win. <laughs> and this, one more thing I want you to say. I am responsible. I am responsible for my life. For my life to make it happen. To make it happen. If you are sitting around for someone to save you, for someone to fix you, or even help you, you are wasting your time. Because only you have the power to take the responsibility to move your life forward. And stop complaining. Get yourself a box and begin complaining in the box and leave it there and walk and do what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> that complaining box. Listen very carefully. And this is one of the things that made me free. You can live in a great house, but that doesn't make you great. You can attend a great church. A great synagogue, a great temple, a great kehila, but that doesn't make you great. You can have great parents, <laughs> but that doesn't make you great. A lot of people think that wealth makes them great. But a lot of wealthy people are not great. On the other hand... There are many that equate poverty, not having, that it must be great. But greatness is not based on your income. Greatness will cost you something. Not somebody else. The one that's going to cost you is you. It's going to cost you some time. It's going to cost your time. It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you resources. It's going to make you hours that on your life. It's going to make you, hallelujah, that you're not going to lay down. It's going because you need to pay the price. You're going to have to pay the price of going that extra mile. Do whatever people that are not willing to do. Greatness is not cheap. And I'm not talking about... Eh, eh, eh. It's not cheap. In Spanish it's called barato. No es barato. It's not cheap. It costs you. It costs you even your tears. It costs you your strength. It costs you that you feel that the earth, that the heaven and the earth are united and you don't know what to do. It costs everything you have. That's why many people cannot achieve greatness. Why? Because they're not willing to pay the price. Are you? Are you? There's something about a person 
They will not lay down and stay down and have a pity party and let's have tea time because I'm waiting for something to happen. You're not, you need to get off your butts and you need to start doing what you need to go. You need to run towards your goal, towards your dream. You need to do it, hallelujah. And I guarantee you, it will meet you halfway. There's something about a person. When all hells break loose, greatness will step in. Greatness will step in, hallelujah, in the middle of your crisis. But there's a little thing that you need to learn. You must be teachable. If you're not teachable, if you are not material teachable, then you cannot have greatness. To be great, you need to be teachable. Great people never stop learning. People who are very filled and what they do are still learning how to get better. Do you know somebody like that? Are you like that? And to be great, you have to learn how to receive correction. I'm almost done. Give me five minutes. Greatness is not coming. This is why in the wilderness, only out of that group, only two men enter the promised land. Because it takes greatness and to stand on what you believe. And do not allow anybody to get in your way, no matter how foolish you think you are. Greatness is not coming. Yeshua, that's why there's only one Yeshua. It's not common to be a savior like Yeshua. It is not common to be a Moses and open the red seed. It is not very common for everybody to be a doctor. It is not common. But it's common to be you. And for you to be great, you need to be uncommon. You cannot be common. You will never achieve greatness if you need the approval of everyone. Can I say this again? You will not achieve greatness if you need the approval of everyone. Greatness is what you believe and you're living up to your potential. You are an original. You are not a copy. Stop trying to be somebody else that you're not. There's greatness in you. There's a potential in you. There's power in you. But it's not what I say. It's what you believe and then you put it to action. Greatness is discovering when you go through hardship. When you go through problems, when you go through situations like the ones I did, that my husband almost died, that you feel that you, you're alone, then you go through that hardship. What is called your wilderness experiences is when the crisis that will bring the greatness out of people. Why? Because nothing is impossible for anyone who believes Amen. that is possible. Because with Elohim, with God, everything is possible. And if he's with you, and if he has created you, and if he has put all these, 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 this power in you, who can be against you? Only you. Only you. Your possibilities, all your possibilities come from his possible. <laughs> and nothing can change that. Amen. Not even you. Turn on your possibility because the possible of Elohim, of God, is always turned on. Just remember, it is possible 
And, and please say with, with me this, this phrase, only one phrase. It's not over. It's not over. Until I win. Until I win. It's not over. It's not over. Until I win. Until I win. One more time. It's not over. It's not over. Until I win. Until I win. Shavuot from First Yahudim. And if you want to see this, you can see this in YouTube, also in Facebook. Love you all.